So hey guys, it's going to be uh, a little video that um, I've had a lot of fun doing. Uh, today is Venom Day 2016. Uh, Venom Day is a, an event run by the Bangor University Herpetology Society here at my university, Bangor University. It is a like kind of world-renowned Venom conference and uh, I was invited to give a small talk on my dissertation. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoy it. Should 
So the data collected so far, obviously I can't tell, go tell you people's personal information about what I've collected, but I can tell you a few of the uh, statistical points. We've got 124, uh, 240 points uh, so far uh, from 155 participants. Uh, that encompasses 118 different species of 53 different genera. Uh, now these encompass uh, snakes of uh, rear fang venomous uh, and front fang venomous, also wild species, and wild, wild individuals and captive individuals, uh, and there's a huge range in there of uh, different sizes and juvenile to adult and all sorts. Um, here's just a few of the interesting things that people have been working by. Uh, Pseudoepius australis, uh, this is the uh, Pseudoepius, uh, King Brown said Pseudoepius is the number one, uh, the largest uh, <coughs> data set I've got for the uh, lapids so far. Uh, a few uh, very critical bites from that. Uh, King Cobra, one very critical bite from that as well from somebody. Uh, got on to the uh, uh, vipers, so this is Calus Molossus, black tail rattlesnake. Um, Talus actually makes up the majority of my viper bites, uh, with 46 yeah, to the genus, a bit like that. Uh, also, Viperiferus, uh, the adder is the most common bite I've got from my data so far, with 26 bites, which is about 11% of the data, so it could be a really good one to keep looking into. There's also been some really awesome uh, rear fang snakes, like uh, this Macropistodon, Clip Pumbo Color, uh, which is awesome, beautiful, and there's been quite a few. Boyga, this is Boyga Dentrophila, it's actually mine coming this weekend, so I'm very hoping to get that soon. Uh, <laughs> so, expected results, kind of results got so far. Uh, from the beginning, it's always been expected that there's going to be huge variation in between taxa. The one that's between, uh, to do with their uh, toxicity classes, whether they're hemotoxic, neurotoxic, cytotoxic, or so on, and you expect to see different pains kind of between those. No Intraspecific varied species, uh, venom variation, has also seemed to play a part so far. Uh, Viperiferus is the example which threw out those 26 different samples. Uh, there has been uh, people who have felt no pain and have been felt excruciating pain. Now, this could be down to human pain reception error, but um, hopefully they'll kind of even out as we get uh, different skew from uh, people with skew on different sides. Uh, a few of the variances, obviously, in the sort of bites I've seen so far. So, Mr. Terrari and uh, Puff Adam, uh, had, had seven bites so far. They start with an immediate pain, which is low to medium. Uh, pain after uh, 30 minutes is going to be very high. Tabus atrox, uh, immediate pain is low, but then after about an hour, uh, it stays quite a medium. <coughs> this is also uh, with the eastern diamondbacks, they show a lot more pain, so you can kind of already start to see uh, that even within the genus there can be a variation. And then Pseudoechus boreoparis, the uh, red belly, which is my most common bite of a lapid, which uh, most people kind of felt nothing, it's just a, a medium kind of uh, level of pain, but then after two hours they're in lots of pain again. <laughs> so, what's left of my study? Um, can I see by a quick show of hands who's seen this somewhere on its media blast, whether it was like posted by me or we'll go and share. Okay, so that's, that's a nice amount. Uh, so this is the survey itself, and it is uh, out there publicly for uh, uh, voluntary uh, use. It is looking <coughs> at the things I've directed uh, So if you've been like, bitten by anything possible on this list, like two <coughs> rare fangs, like a fossil of cobras, Boiga, even down to just uh, fetch it on with your uh, uh, hogno snakes, uh, all the way up to any like front fang, fang uh, this information that you could provide, or a friend of yours could provide, would be really useful. Um, so, yeah, so there'll be a link going up on the uh, Facebook event uh, of the survey. And it'd be really great if you have been bitten by any of these species. Or if you know anyone who's been any of species, to share it with them. Uh, because the more species and the more accounts I get, uh, the greater diversity we get to see the resort. Um, additionally, if you don't use Facebook and, or you can't find anywhere else online, I'll be waiting outside uh, afterwards uh, to get email addresses to people to send it to. 
uh, I just like to thank Wolfgang so far for being the supervisor and like all the participants who filled in the survey so far, especially those who are here today. Uh, so yeah, I know it's just short talks and nice pretty photos, but uh, hopefully I'll be back next year with the actual results. Sure. Thank you very much. select their most intense amount of pain, so this could be an hour later, five hours later, and then they rate it there as well. Um, so yeah. Okay, the other one was, do you have a, a, an idea of the sample size you're going to need to take care of the variation from each species? Uh, not quite as such as like an actual number, but I definitely want to get a lot more than like, as much as I can. To uh, go. So I, I was kind of looking for maybe quadrupling the sample size or so. Uh, that'd be a really good like, base to get to. Uh, <coughs> question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I would expect there to be a relationship between pain and lethality, because obviously the yeah. pregnant has to survive. So therefore, are the snakes you're getting results for the ones you would necessarily? So I haven't actually been able to analyze it all yet, like I haven't gone, I've just literally just been collecting data in the past month or so, so I haven't been able to look at all of them. But um, there is obviously a lot of variation anecdotally looking at it. Um, so I've had bites from some of the most venomous snakes, so I've had inland lots of taipan bites, um, I've had across a bite bites, and when, even though they are like the most dangerous and highest toxicity, they don't necessarily have the uh, most like pain. Um, from, from what people have shown, at least. Um, and I think it's good to see you get to it and cut it out. That's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, yeah. Are you able to account for the subjectivity of the uh, pain and the quantities? Um, the real answer is no. Um, yeah, it's, it's not really possible uh, on a scale like this. Just, uh, uh, without doing other tests, to obviously test their pain index, let's so say out of a cold water freeze, uh, you'd struggle to um, see how they are with pain. So, so you can't really just at the moment. Uh, yeah. Is something to account the difference with feeding bites? Mm -hmm. Because handling errors is mistaken. Um, so, majority of these um, are, well, a lot of them can be and there's a lot of wild bites. And obviously, they're defensive bites. Um, I haven't looked into it. I uh, haven't asked for whether it was feeding or handling by right. um, but that obviously yeah, it could have a slight like, difference. Obviously, the majority of bites are going to be you know, handled by like, handling defensive bites and like, stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah. Are you going to try and sort the physical from the venom effects? In other words, if you're hit by a snake with long, large fangs, it's probably going to hurt from the short fangs, likewise, something like a foregear, which has a lot yeah. of backwards pointing teeth to catch birds. So, that is one thing I take into consideration. I have expressed in the form like that uh, venom must be guaranteed by it. So, obviously, from your rear fang stuff, you might obviously uh, not get bitten, or you might shoot up hard enough, or you might get a dry bite. And obviously, from those, we're not looking at those at all because that's irrelevant, that's paid from puncture wound or whatever. Um, also, next to each of the description, uh, each of the scale ratings, uh, people have left descriptions of uh, what the pain was. And typically, if it was a higher pain, uh, if it was a lower pain or something, they would have described the pain was not really from the venom, more from the bite. But those typically seem to be on like the lower end because some of more intense pains are unlikely to be just from the bite. Oh, sorry. With your 
because you had less people who had bikes, so people have been multiple times. Yeah. Are you taking into consideration um, the, the then the weakness against the then on repeat bikes, so the greater effects because they've been bitten before, or are you just treating everyone as a fresh bite? Uh, everything has to be treated as a fresh bite. Um, but uh, with some people, they've been bitten by, I think the most I've had so far is one person being bitten by six snakes. <laughs> um, uh, and some people have been like six separate individual snakes. I have somebody who's bitten by six, uh, kind of all of that I basically don't know. I don't know. So maybe if like the same species can find them again, it might make a bit of a difference, but obviously it's not being looked into in this case. So I need to think more. And are you asking them when they were bitten? Um, yeah, so they've also been asked like kind of how old they were at the bite age. So uh, some people who are really young, some people are older, and obviously that will have an effect on uh, their immune system, and, uh, how they do respond to bites. Yeah, I just thought their recollections are paid. Because I don't know about you, but whenever I have a tooth out, it always surprises me how much you hurt. But then I sort of forget. Yeah, you just do sort of forget how Yeah, like there's obviously something um, we do. We are asking people who are typically herpetologists. So they're more likely to be recording what actually happened uh, to them. Um, unlike if you start asking natives, they're, they're less likely to know what species it is, and maybe they don't get to hospital or something else. They don't record the pain or the symptoms at the time. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. I, I, I've had a brilliant day, as Venom Day always is, but actually talking to such a, a, a fully loaded room, uh, currently empty, but uh, it is just uh, an awesome thing to do. It's getting me up there on the uh, herpetological ladder. It seems like lots of people had good questions about uh, my uh, dissertation. And um, you know what? I, I hope you guys enjoy, guys enjoy the talk. I'll probably be bringing out videos in the future about uh, what I actually find uh, from my results. But uh, for now, um, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I will see you soon with another video, yay!